The evening show starts now. Good evening and welcome to your new home. Yes, welcome to your place of solace. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the evening show. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, ladies. Yes, yes, yes. And thank you guys so much for joining us today. As promised, August 2nd, ladies. Mm -hmm. We are here. We are here yeah. and we are streaming. <laughs> now listen, I waste no time as I introduce alongside me uh, my radiant co-host. We have the lady Rachel Cowie Clark. She's the co-owner of Anything Honey and one of the sweetest and most bubbly personalities you can find. Rachel, say hello <laughs> to the folks. Say hello to the folks. Hello to everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy to be a co-host with Mel and Mel. And um Mel is right. Two Mel's. Let me let me let me waste more time in introducing the other Mel. Uh, and I, I like the fact that I can call can you know I always get hey Mel, Mel. And you know, when I when Mel was introduced to my life, I felt so complete. I felt square. <laughs> joke, joke, no okay, care. Right. Let me waste more time <laughs> introducing the beautiful uh, Melina the Silver. She's the owner of Beauty with Grace Salon and Spa. <laughs> Organized focused and intentional are uh, three words that best describe her. Melina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. You had no idea this is how I felt about you. <laughs> Melina, no say idea. hello to the people. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's so nice to finally be here live with you all. Looking forward to all that we'll share together. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, ladies, as promised, the evening show is finally here. And listen, we have so much in store, so much uh, to, to offer and to give yes. to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean, the world at large. Yes. So what are, what are some of the things? Yeah. Well, our yeah. friend, we don't want to be standing up here and talking all this good stuff and nobody's listening. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so. Pause, wait. Send a WhatsApp call. Then quick, I, quick. Pick up your phone, do it while you're seeing us talking and just start a dial. Send them text and then start Because you know, once we start to talk, you don't want to leave your screen. Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And listen, we have, listen, let, let's just give them an idea of what is expected. Mm -hmm. Listen, we have beauty tips. On this very, very first episode, we have some beauty tips. Uh, yes, by our very own Melina De Silva. Yeah, yeah, Mel, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And we'll be course, talking about legacy as well, leaving a legacy. Yes, we will. Which is very important. Ladies, what, yeah. what does that statement even mean to, to each of you individually? Hmm. Um, and how me, important? Yeah. So for me, leaving a legacy is so important. Um, I have four kids, as you all will soon find out. <laughs> yes, four kids. I have two boys and two girls. And coming out from a, a family where um, you start to check back to see what are the things that have been passed on and what you want to change um, in terms of what has been left. Yeah. You now focus on, okay, when I leave, what am I leaving behind for these children? What are the things that they're going to carry on? What are they going to remember? What mm -hmm. are they going to, even now, like when I send my kids off to school, I always tell them, remember, you are above average. You are a mm -hmm. child of God, mm -hmm. and that is who you represent. And so you try to, from time to time, just instill things and to make sure certain things are constant in their air. So mm -hmm. you're mindful of the things that you do. You're mindful of the decisions that you make because you know those things are going to impact them yes. in their future. Do I want to have uh, leave a legacy where they're, they're saying to themselves, boy, 
mommy and daddy could have done so much more for us mm. and i wish they did it would have been so much easier this would have been less stressful yeah so yeah. you know it's yeah. just really trying to make their life easier to not let them have to face the struggles and the hardships that you want you went through it's not like you want to take away everything because of course it's life and you want them to experience the fullness of life the ups and downs the curves yes. the potholes the mountains the valleys it's the necessary. celebration it yes it's necessary it's necessary but if you could take away some of the yes harshness of it and, and smoothen some of the edges to me that's where legacy comes in mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that is so true and so on point because i mean for me i don't have children but i have nieces i have nephews and i'm very much involved in the life of our church and a lot of what people learn or the younger ones that come after you learn based on what they see and the examples that are set yeah. and i want to be that person that would have set a good example based on the life that i have lived and you know where i have gone before to fine tune a little bit and help yeah. somebody else come along to see all right this is what you could have done a little better yeah. and help people in areas especially where for me i didn't like to fail and for me failing yeah. is something that took me a while to deal with and it's like oh my gosh how do i move forward faster and mm. I, I remember hearing the statement fail fast and if i could help somebody to know when you fail fast and failure is okay now that is not an option failure is a part of life yes. you know um and that legacy of moving forward don't let procrastination steal your time mm. and for me sometimes you put it off and you say oh god i'll try again some other time and you know you're not ready to deal with it again mm. and the fact that time just ticks by the legacy helps people come after you learn from the lessons that you already learned yes. you have you learned that i have learned that um time waits on no man you, yeah. you hear people say but when you look back and you wonder it's five years Gone already. Mm, yeah. <laughs> when when Mel contacted me concerning this and I saved Melina's number and I looked back and I said, What this what eight Mel? Eight Come years eight and two months. <laughs> it's been eight years, right? Yeah. <gasps> Time with no man. So yeah. legacy is learning from your mistakes to me. Legacy is um creating a part. Legacy is what do i want people to say about me that after after i have left every day we are writing our own eulogy yes mm -hmm. and i think about that you know because how ha ha has the person that i have the people that i've spoken with today become any better because i correct spoke, you know and little things it's the little yeah. thing yeah yeah and we can share and speak into people's lives yes. the word says the generation of the righteous shall be blessed yes. i know sometimes as children of god we might be fearful concerning something mm -hmm. just, you, you would have learned along the way speak any word made a difference yeah. and somebody along the way and you say here what guess what girl the generation of the righteous shall yes be yes hey, you know, mm -hmm. and this is learning to do this things is like that this is good yeah. it's funny that you mentioned fear uh because for me uh for a number of years I allowed fear to keep me back mm. and, and i know this is something so many i as i as i go through my journey in life and now i'm talking about it or have come to a place where i'm not where i was or almost a place of total overcoming that that fear of failure that was my thing fear of failure to the point that i would not enter something or be a part of something if i, I had this slightest inclination <laughs> yeah i, I had the slightest it. inclination that i may feel at this mm -hmm. and that is something that i think has now uh, made me realize uh, let me put this in i have a daughter i'm the mother of one mm -hmm. one three-year-old going on 15 right <laughs> <laughs> and i realize how important it is what am i passing to her Mm -hmm. Am I also going to when she gets to a place where she is saying to me, "Hey, um, I don't think I want to do this. Mm -hmm. What can I? How can I encourage her? What can I yeah. teach her mm -hmm. if I myself am at the same place?" Nice. And that has really pushed me over the years to say, "Okay, I need to be a better me, not because of uh, any selfish desire. Nice. But I want to be a better me for her." yeah for others and for yeah. other young women that may be looking at looking people. on yeah and i think it's so that is part of the legacy sometimes we look at it in terms of uh what am i giving to my 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 family members financially yeah. but mm -hmm. it's a legacy to yeah. me it's beyond that it's beyond that yeah legacy is about empowering mm -hmm. yes. 
Yes, mm-hmm. and live on from generation to generation. Yeah. Improvement yeah. and you know, just betterment of self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen, ladies, I'm so excited to be on this journey with you. Uh, the evening show is is really a, a, a packed show that is people focused. Mm. I think that's the main thing that we want to make sure we get out there. But guys, don't go anywhere because uh, we're gonna take a, a light a light break as we get into our beauty tips. Brought to you by <laughs> Beauty with Grace Salon and Spa. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hello, hello. So guys, we want to highlight the fact that when you're doing your facial, um, your at-home facial, your self-care, you do your steam, you do your mask, you do your scrubs, whatever, you include your neck and your chest area. Um, that area we call it the decolletage area so it's your chest area all your all of your neck hair and your face so whether you're doing your scrub you include it so you include that area as part of your face so, um so like when you're wearing a shirt this part will be open if you're wearing um, a v-neck this is the part that will be open so you want to make sure that you're getting this area as well when you're doing your face um, if some of you would have gone to get a facial done, and they should, um, if they're doing it properly, include your face, include your neck area, you'll realize they're massaging this area all the way um, up your neck and including your face as well. So the whole area we should pay attention to. So when you're massaging your face after you do your cleanse and your scrub and so on, and you're using your um, moisturizer or Whatever it is you're using to put on your face, include your neck area. But you're not dragging your neck down because ladies, that don't look cute. So we want to lift. Lift. You lift just as you're lifting the cheek, the cheek area. You're lifting your forehead when you're applying the moisturizer. You always, you don't ever drag nothing down. No, that down is not good. Up. Up. We want everything up. We want everything staying up. <laughs> nice and perky. <laughs> so you're including the area on your chest and your neck but you're working it everything is coming up and then you work the, the the cheek and the forehead area you work it up everything is up you're massaging up and away same thing with the neck so you want to do your massage if you're doing your um mask as well include at least once include the neck area to include the mask of course it will be messy but we're taking care of our full self so that's not the issue <laughs> we'll bathe and rinse off after so you're including the neck area, you're including your face, the whole decolletage area, you're including all of it when you're doing your facial regime. So when you're doing your steam, of course, if you could allow it to come um, as far down as possible, you know, put your whole self over that bowl and let it, even if it's to let it run down, just let, let it be a part of the treatment, right? So. That was just the tip this week, just to include all of, include your decolletage area in all of your prep, in all of your self-care, in all of your massages, and all the scrubs, and all the masks, include it. So when you're moisturizing, you're doing your, your face, and neck, and chest area. So everything is included. So, until next time, remember, self-care is not selfish. We're doing this because we love ourselves, and you can only perform to your best when you're your best self. So... Until next time, guys. Take care. Welcome back to the evening show. Uh, the August the 2nd. I almost said August the 28th. What is happening on the 28th? Anyhow. All right. Okay, ladies. So our overarching theme is leaving a legacy, and uh, which can address a wide spectrum of topics. Uh, so today, let's bring it home a bit. And uh, of course, we know discipline, production, tolerance, they are the watchwords of uh, this great country of ours, Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, we, we want to dive in a bit. Of course, we celebrated Emancipation Day, August 1st, just yesterday. 
And today uh, we, we've, we've, we've come to a place where we are free, but there are some things that we need to also apply to our life to ensure uh, that total sense of freedom from a mental aspect and mm -hmm. just let it overlay or, or cover uh, other aspects of our life. So let's talk a bit about uh, discipline, production, tolerance, and our personal uh, application of it in our lives. Um, so for me, I'll take discipline. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> no surprise. There is no surprise. No surprise. Listen, guys, I know you, you don't know us yet, but oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, Emily. You'll be exposing me. <laughs> Take it away. Oh, yes, discipline. I know you mentioned just now about us being free and all of that, but I think um, if we are to truly embrace freedom, that it will take a measure of restriction in order for us to be free in every regard. So yes, we are free, but if you're free and you still have the same mentality, you haven't changed the way that you do things, you haven't changed anything about how you were from before, you'll continue doing exactly the same things that you were doing from before with the same mindset. So it requires a change of mind, a change of behavior, a change of um, how you approach different things. And discipline is more than just doing what you need to do because somebody watching you or yes. master over you. To me, that's the same, you're still in bondage. But discipline requires you to have a specific code of conduct. Like I remember um, during COVID, um, hairdressers were the last. It seems as if I, I, I kept saying it, like we were the last to get recessed. We were in detention <laughs> for this long period of time. Like everybody was getting to come out and play. And hairdressers was like, no, no. Uh -huh. still have lines Mel, to do. Mel, Mel, I just want you to know, as much as the hairdressers felt as though they were suffering, us women were suffering as well, all right? <laughs> Wait till the hairdressers go. Yeah, we were happy to stay in the like, come on. A lot of people's hairstyles drastically changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we were the last, it seems as if we were the last to come out. And um, discipline to me requires a code of conduct. Are you going to underneath, under low, break the law? Or are you going to be disciplined and Hold firm to the fact that not only is the government requiring you to do something, but above that, God requires me to obey the laws of the land. You know, and of course, um, Minister Diasing was not in my store. Um, Dr. Parasaram does not live near to me. So it's not like, you know, you're feeling like, God, they're right there, they're watching. But I decided that I was not going to teeth recess before yes, yes. it was given to me. Yeah, and so to me yeah, your own moral compass, your mm -hmm. code that you, you stand by, if this is not right, then I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. um, no matter who is around. And so All to me, being done decently and in, and order. in order. So mm -hmm. wait your turn. Mm -hmm. So to me, <laughs> disciplines require requires you as an individual to is almost as if loyalty to self you know when you're you're, yep. you're doing your exercise and you don't have well for all who were exercising before you don't have your gym um instructor you can't mm -hmm. go to the gym the gym so are we all going to be really police coming out of covid or am i going to do something still to be active so it's your own personal decision to decide your responsibility am i going to do this despite even though everybody is doing it because trust me Mm -hmm. As walking around ever so often when we, we went outside to get something and wait now. Where these ladies get in their hair done? Oh. Who do it here? You understand? They don't come at you. They don't come at you normally. You go ahead. <laughs> but, but you know, a lot of people found YouTube. So they yeah. say, well, you never know. Good never cover, know. Rachel. Good cover. Literally. Good cover. <laughs> I mean, I'm still not getting over the roly poly. Yeah, uh -huh. she just made right. Uh -huh. <laughs> COVID, no, COVID. but seriously, it required you to decide: Am I yeah. going to do like everybody else, or am mm -hmm. I going to stick to my guns, mm -hmm. ban my belly, and do what mm -hmm. it is I have decided mm -hmm. and purpose in myself to do? Mm -hmm. So, to me, that's where discipline um, comes in, and it is a matter of. 
I'm going to do it anyway. You understand? And you know what, Mel, that comes into leaving a legacy because your children yeah. as well are seeing that the government said this is what you should be doing. Yeah. Right. And they would know that if you disobey that law, yes. mommy, Correct. how come you do it here? Yeah. And Correct. then you want to create a scenario to justify yeah. your actions to your children. Exactly. And then and you, have no like, authority. Authority. Yeah. you have no moral authority. No moral authority. You have no authority. You have to correct them when mm -hmm. you want to. So it's, yeah, it's, because it's, you need to have the moral authority to be able exactly. to say, oh, no, you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think I want to, I want to jump in on, on, on the production aspect one time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, during the season, uh, and we've said it before, a lot has changed for so many of us. Um, yeah. And there were a lot of positives. I know uh, condolences to those who may have lost um, a family member or a loved one. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, when I say positives, I don't mean it in any rejoicing way, but I mean it in terms of a, a personal aspect, in terms of a, a, a change of thinking, a, yeah. a change of heart even. And and for me, the, the production aspect comes in in terms of, uh, we saw, there, there are two aspects of it that I want to discuss. Yeah. We saw uh, where people, uh, there was a different type of love that we saw, and we we see it all the time when we have uh, any type of crisis or whatever. Crisis, but, you yeah. know, where people reach out, people were now giving more to those who uh, may have lost their jobs. People will yeah. be really productive in that aspect, and it's so necessary to to push the production of love. If I could use such a term, yeah. especially at a time where so many people would have been uh, maybe saddened, uh, maybe in in disbelief, or maybe. Uh, some people were in a state of panic. Yeah. Some people were in a state of panic. And, you know, you, you had to then talk with them and really give them that that uh, comfort or, or, or that, that love that gave them the comfort to assure them mm -hmm. that, hey, things could be better. Things are going to get better. This too shall pass. Type yeah. of encouragement. And even in terms of production from a what, as we look inside internally now, what have we been doing with our lives? Yeah. Have we been productive in the sense of uh, how does our family members see us? I know a lot of people have now gotten the opportunity to understand their spouses uh, in, a, in a different way that they mm -hmm. have not before because you had no choice. Yeah, but to <laughs> you spend that time, time, quality time. <laughs> <laughs> time. The same thing for your children. And, and, yes. and I heard coming out of this, a lot of people saying uh, family, they realize yeah. the importance of family. Correct. People, people even got a lot more productive in the kitchen, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> A lot did of you, did you try doubles. Yeah. I, I, I just about to say, a lot of triple doubles. I did. I did. I did. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did as well. I did as well. I still afford no. reopening. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we want to highlight that Rachel, Rachel made doubles. I made them. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, she's... she's. I um. Nina I and I cook. I'll take the sentence from that, that way. We cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 um... Uh, I told my husband, I said, love, you're not going to be marrying me for domestic excellence. Um, I was the part, I I, yes, he knew, he knew, he knew exactly what he was getting into. Um, I used to have longer nails because I just liked long nails, you know, pretty nails and stuff. But then I realized he liked bread. I had to learn to make bread. So that, that happened along the way before. That was part of your we that was productive in that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that no, I, I, before before COVID, but yeah. I, I got to practice it a little more because if you didn't make the bread or the bake, no yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. and I, I I I don't know. We we but we had bread, we had doubles, we had um fry bake. Um yeah, had, uh, yeah I I fry bake. Let me tell you somebody fry baker. <laughs> we in marriage, I made fry bake a couple times. Door stoppers, two weeks. <laughs> Pick the truth. <laughs> oh, my word. Door stoppers. Door stoppers. But I found a good recipe online, and my husband was very proud of the, that, that fried beef. I can't recall which of the recipes are combinations of recipes it was, so I may not have a repeat performance. <laughs> But that was productivity in the kitchen. <laughs> I agree, I agree. No, we, we can have a lot of more tolerance, but uh, there's a, a, a lady who we're going to be chatting with. Yes, stay glued because we're going to be chatting with Mrs. The Honorable. Can I Can I use that? All right. The very graceful. Very graceful. 
very graceful uh, Hazel Manning, Mrs. Hazel Manning. She's going to be chatting with us. So you don't want to go anywhere. But before that, it's all about leaving a legacy. And uh, we have a special feature for you. Keep it tuned. The evening show, people. I love me a good roti. I love me a good pillow. Hi, my name is Shanice Musgrave and I'm currently pursuing medicine and a master's in education and innovation. I attend the University of the West Indies Cape Hill campus and I'm completing my master's with the University of South Wales. I have also attended the New York Institute of Technology where I completed my first degree in biomedical engineering and of course Throughout my childhood and teen years, I would have attended Mova Anglican, Mova Laventil Secondary, St. James Secondary, and Sixth Form Government, aka Poly. I know this might sound trivial, but since I was eight years old, I always wanted to study medicine. I had this desire. Honestly, one day I got this 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 medical kit from my uncle and godfather, and I just fell in love with the idea. Since then, I love to see and I had a love for science I had a love more than just science I had a love for people I had this understanding that medicine is is one thing that I should do and it is part of my call and purpose on the earth one of my biggest challenges was academics in in some areas I was not the student who got all ones biology and chemistry i had gotten threes grade threes and even physics i had gotten a four but guess what i was able to get in to sixth form nonetheless and i know it is only by the grace of god in my first year of sixth form i passed keep exams i passed them but they were not grade ones at all i did some self-searching i did some assessments and i even encountered a lot of great people during that period i went to a conference with Dr. the late dr miles monroe i was trying to figure out what i needed to get right understanding my learning style was one of my biggest challenges and 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 and, and, and just staying motivated because you know when you're not at the top of the class or you know in our system when you don't get all ones it, 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 the understanding is that, well, you're not fit enough to make it to med school or you're not fit enough to make it to engineering school or what have you. But I want to say that I have conquered that concept and that it is not true. Your grades do not determine your final destination. Now, when it comes to strategizing and setting goals, I believe it's very, very important. And I believe that it's important to write the vision and make it plain. I used to write my short-term, medium, and long-term goals. And I used to also write my daily task as well because those are simple tasks. But at the end of the day, you want to ensure that you get it done. So I set my goals and every single day, you know, I had some sort of action plan and I work towards it. I even do it right now, working towards the action plan, making sure that they are surely measurable and, and that you put a time to it. And I work towards it every single day until the very end, until it's complete, until it's completion. So I want to, you know, encourage you that setting goals is very important and it will surely lead to success. One of my, the, my goals in the most recent years was to really take my SAT program to the next level. And I was able to see the success. I was able to see um, the reach until in, 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 in a few places I am a household name when it comes to SAT prep programs. So it's really important to set those goals and see them through. A lot of people would say, yeah, medicine is a lot of hard work, it's a lot of studying, it's really difficult, it's a lot of sleepless nights, but I, I'm here to tell you, I definitely get sleep. So I would say don't go into medicine thinking that you're not going to sleep at all. You need to find your strategy and I have found my strategy and I would say to find your strategy, make sure you understand who you are as a learner, make sure you understand who you are as a person and work smart and not hard. Best advice I have been given is actually from my father when he, he would always say, keep 
the end in mind. Whatever you set out to do, keep the end in mind. And that speaks about the target. What is that goal that you're trying to achieve? What is it that you are pressing towards? So keep the end in mind. And every time you work towards something and you keep the, the finish line in mind, trust me, you're going to achieve it because it is going to give you that extra fight. It is going to give you that extra boost and that extra energy as necessary and needed to complete it till the very end. My support team is my parents, my brothers, my family, my fiance, his family, my good, good, good friends, my sisters, my brothers in Christ. It's a, it's, the, the circle is not large, you know. They are like, you know, that backbone, that cushioning that you need. Even when you're going and you feel like you're getting weak, they uphold you. So I believe a support team is very, very important. One of my most recent um, and greatest accomplishments is to be able to begin walking in my purpose and destiny again because sometimes we we make mistakes or we fall off the wagon for a little bit we get distracted we listen to the wrong voices and then you know we are so afraid of getting back up and pushing forward so i am saying to be able to be upper functioning the way i am now is a great accomplishment to be in medical school just completed my first year of medical school it is a great accomplishment to be completing my master's even while literally completing this first year of medical school and going into my second year that is a great accomplishment to be able to reach out and and counsel and motivate and empower others through Christ and also through academics um, via my tutoring business and preparing students for SATs. Those are some of my greatest accomplishments. It is important to leave a legacy because without a legacy, there is no succession. Without a legacy, there is not, there is no foundation in place for those who come after. Without a legacy, literally a people perish, a nation die. Because from my understanding, one man is a nation. And if I cannot leave a legacy, then I leave my nation in ruins. Clean space is the highest priority during this time. We provide state-of-the-art professional disinfecting services. We offer a choice of services to feed your needs. Disinfecting services. Sanitizing services. Deep cleaning. Electrostatic disinfection services and much more. Save your time. Save your money. Save yourself. Visit our website or call us for your next cleaning service today. Hey guys, welcome back and thank you so much for tuning in to the evening show. Now, as mentioned earlier, we have a special guest with us and uh, she is the graceful Mrs. Hazel Manning. Listen, she's a lady of great achievement and uh, so many titles. Many call her virtuous and she has been the supportive wife of the later uh, People's National Movement leader and fourth Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Patrick Augustus Manning. Now, Mrs. Manning uh, entered the Senate as People's National Movement Senator after the uh, 2001 election. She served as Minister of uh, Education, subsequently as Minister of Local Government. But there's just so much to her as a person. Now, Mrs. Manning is a uh, certified a John Maxwell coach, speaker, and a trainer. They are founder of the leadership firm, TLF, and a lead consultant. And I can attest as uh, after having uh, conversations with her prior to this, that she, listen, when you finish talking with Mrs. Hazel Manning, you feel empowered. You feel as though you can just conquer the world. So Mrs. Hazel Manning, welcome so much to the evening show, our very first episode. Uh, we are so happy to have you here. Thank you very much, Mel. I too am very impressed with you. Thank having you. heard you and having chatted with you. Uh, you're a young woman on the go, on the make, and I'm now for the first time meeting your partners and they yes. too. Um, they're going to change Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, oh, amen. We are yeah. great. <laughs> hey, ladies, get your blush out. Get your blush out. <laughs> now, listen, Mrs. Manning, we've been, uh, I think, the overarching theme of, of, of our 
the evening show is about leaving a legacy. And um, I know you have so much more to do, but uh, I can say for Melina and for Rachel, you have already left such a legacy. Uh, yes. I want to say for all, but to empower women. I think as women, we have, we have looked at you and we have been empowered in some way. And uh, as we start, I just want to get an idea of uh, what has it, did you have like a, a, a vision, a mission board? What was it like for you as you started your journey uh, your, into life? That's a way back then. I was, you wouldn't believe it, but I was the most shy young lady out. Wow. I, I grew up as an only child. I was a single, single parent. My, my mother brought me up. And I was really painfully shy. Mm -hmm. I really developed into a little less shy as I, as I got married and became very involved in the politics. And even in the early days of the politics, I, I was not very much part of it mm -hmm. because I spent the time bringing up my children. Wow. Because they could not be orphans. They had a father who was busy oh, outside there looking after the nation. Mm -hmm. And it was my job to look after the children. It was only after they left and went on to university that I became more involved in politics. So at that point in time, I became a minister and began um, working in, in the national interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday we celebrated uh, Emancipation Day, uh, August 1st. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, it would have come off the, the heels of, of so many with uh, so many great men with a vision, um, with uh, uh, a plan for our nation. And, and I know you're very... You're very uh, focused, and you 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 love your country. I know that we've had we've had we've had so many conversations, and my question to you would be, and you mentioned how important it is being there for your children, which I would say in those words, right? Uh, I think uh, as we've seen through our society, uh, women these days, ladies, you all could jump in here with me. We have those who we separate being a mother if we have a, if we have children from. Uh, the business life or the, yeah. or the uh, I want my career, my career is most important. Yeah. And sometimes we neglect uh, that other job, that other calling, uh, that other very important responsibility as we grow the future. Uh, what would you say, Mrs. Manning, uh, to other women who uh, may be finding it hard to find that balance in terms of motherhood and a career? I would say that you don't give up. Yeah. You, and I'm agreeing with you that there's that need for a plan, even though my planning came late in the game, but there's that need for a plan and there's that need to get support. Yes. Support of your family, support of good friends uh, to be able to make it, to move on and to move forward. If that support is not there, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and as women, I think we need the support even more. Do you think it's any different now in terms of the workplace? because some women really find it hard or harder to manage um, working and being a mom. I mean, now that we get to work from home in some scenarios, it's mm -hmm. a little easier, but even working from home with children, especially is a challenge. It is a challenge. Bringing up children is a challenge. It will always be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, so whether you work or you don't work or you're a housewife like most of our parents were, um, the modern woman who is now the, having to balance the two, working and, and looking after the children, this is going to be a challenge. Um, how we do it, we've got to have the support to do it. But then there are a lot of single parents, single women, and they, they don't have that network to lean on. And I know that's one of the challenges. And you know, you know, when I my my when Patrick was alive, my the issues that I couldn't deal with, I would just pass them on to him. You know, you see, <laughs> you you've got a problem with something, and I would say, Go talk to your father. Right. And then he was no longer there. Right. And, and in that year after he passed, I had serious issues 
in how to manage and how to cope. Wow. And, and I always say to people that the, the people or the person I really respected was a single mother. Mm -hmm. how, did, how does she do it alone, uh, looking, especially looking after men, looking after boys? Yeah. How, how do they do it? Mm -hmm. And um, But I realized that I was able to survive again because of support. And, and you know, it is not wise to, do, to try to do it alone. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's difficult to do it alone. And there must be some auntie, some auntie, some grandmother, some somebody. uncle, somebody somewhere who would, if it's just, even if it's just to speak with, somebody mm -hmm. sit and say, listen, I'm, I'm having trouble. How do you think I, I should do this? Even if it's just for that, um, mm -hmm. you need, you can't do it alone. Yeah. You know, living is not a, 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 an alone thing. Yes. Um, it, 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 when you team, um, you, you tend to go further and do better. Yeah. So I want to ask, um, because I think sometimes it's a bit challenging to even find a person or persons that you could probably um, lean on or find that shoulder to lean on. How do you, um, let's just say you don't have the family, um, close-knit family to say, okay, I need a breather today and I need, I need a minute, you know, because you're on your own or, um, cause I remember when my husband was doing his masters, I felt like a single parent. And sometimes you try to do so much to fill the gap. How do you go about finding individuals that would fit the position of a rock or crutch at that, for that, for that, at that period. As you said, when, when your husband wasn't there, you would have had to navigate your way through that period. How do you do that search? <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, before I became a coach, I would tell you trial and error. Wow, you know, okay. You, you, you find a friend and you start chatting and then you would, as time goes on, and that's what Mel said when she started, you know, these were people who are tried and tested. Right. Trial, trial and error. Having become a coach, I realized that there's a systematic approach where you can also do assessments. There are all kinds of instruments outside there. One of the instruments we use is the DISC assessment, where you identify the personality of the person. This is what this person is a D or an I or an S or a C, as right. the case may be. And understanding the personality of that person, the profiling of that person and the behaviors expected of that person, you then know that this is the person um, I could maybe um, get along with better. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, again, it is always trial and error. Yeah. There's always that willingness to trust, to open up, to trust. And to, if things don't go well, to retreat and to start again without bitterness, mm -hmm. without rancor, and, and to start again. So you, all, it's, it's, you have to be just vulnerable at times, just asking for help. Now, Mrs. Manning, you mentioned the DISC assessment. For those of us who uh, may not, maybe not the wiser, <laughs> what, yeah. what does the acronym uh, stand for? Uh, it's basically, I don't, I'm sure you've heard of Myers-Briggs. Yes. It used to be an instrument that was used long ago. This is a modern approach. I'm very much involved in the John Maxwell program. <laughs> I'm a John Maxwell coach. I do when we do our our workshops, we do the model, the John Maxwell model. And one of the instruments used at that time is uh, that we use as as we do our workshops is what's called the disc assessment. It is a basically an, an instrument that's used, developed in the 1920s or so by a Dr. Marston, and it's used to assess. Uh, your, your, your personality, right. your behavior, your behaviors, and encourage you to build relationships, encourage you how to communicate um, with others who are different from you. Mm -hmm. So it is one of those uh, models developed by psychologists, psychiatrists, behavioral scientists, etc. And right. really a very useful instrument as you lead in your home, as you lead in your workplace, as you, as some people who have called the national service, as you, as you interact with people, so it's a good instrument to know. Um, you, you Google the, the 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 internet and you find yes. it. Yeah. You find preliminary or elementary programs, and you 
you can read up on it and get, get a clear sense of who you are and why you are. And right. then you, if you understand your why, you can then you have purpose and so you can go ahead to, to, to be successful. Oh, I think that's very necessary. And I, I know the ladies would agree with me in terms of uh, knowing who you are. Uh, I think when you zero in on who you are, then you uh, better understand purpose. And I think in understanding yourself, it allows you to now uh, respect the process that others are going through. Yes. It allows you to respect others in a way that uh, we're different and yes. that's okay. And, and to, in respecting it, you, you interact differently. Yes. I and you know before I said why does she speak so much and then you see that now I would say ah she's an I. And that <laughs> means that there's a certain behavior, a certain profiling, a certain uh, attitude that you would see and you understand that's what she is. Mm -hmm. Therefore now how do I deal with her? I would then deal with her in a particular way. Mm -hmm. uh, for somebody who is uh, who is chatty and charismatic and people oriented I will deal differently to somebody who's very quiet and very reserved and very shy. Um, they, they, they tend to get a little um, upset, a little bit drawn if you come on too crowd, too loud and too too much. Because mm, so it you, becomes too much for them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And that's who they are. You know, yeah. you have to accept people as to what they are and who they are. It helps very much to in relationships, oh, yes. with your husband and wife, your children. Uh, if you get a sense of who the other personality is, mm. um, you then deal differently. Yes. You don't try to make over people. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, yes, <laughs> and that is a something. key point. Yes. Yeah, because we I should touch something. touch something there. So I know yeah. you all have so much. <laughs> I hope your husband oh, yes. yes, my husband. My husband is nodding. He's, he's in the back like, now I get it. I, yeah, that, that's why she's like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you know I, sometimes we tend to be less tolerable of people because they are different from us. Yes. And so, oh, this oh, she too loud. I can't understand why. And this uh -huh. one, oh, she's so aggressive. But like, if we take the time to understand why the person is the way they are mm -hmm. and what makes up the individual, then you'll understand too that you are appearing to be in a particular way to somebody else. Exactly. Because we, we, generally, we generally just project ourselves onto other people. Yes. So sometimes we think, okay, like me, I like to talk. And then I might meet someone who is not as talkative or is not as warm or open. And I would think, but why are they so curt? Or why are they so just abrupt? But the mm -hmm. fact is their, their cool. language is let's get down to the meat and potatoes. Yes. <laughs> that, that's and, who they are. and if you understand that that's who they are, yes. you, you just accept it and you move mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and especially with your children or your spouse. Yes. yes. You know, don't yes. try to make them over. That's who they are. So you meet them where they are. Right. And, then, and then you walk that journey with them. It, it's, it's, it's really so funny. Um, yeah. That's a small story I remember recently. I like pancakes and I would think that's an important thing is a quick, nice breakfast. And I would do it for a special occasion. And my husband was like, you know, um, you like pancakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that he wouldn't eat it, but he's like, it's special to you. <laughs> He preferred to have some bacon sawfish, you know, some yes. bird roll, you know. Yeah. So it's simple things. It's the little things we have to yeah. be listening out for. Yeah. yeah. That's how true. The relationship then becomes more congenial. Yeah. Yes. yes. And he begins to think that, you know, you understand me and you take yes. care of me and you're watching my back and you, you know, exactly. it's more comfortable rather than fretting and fussing all the time because you're trying yeah. to move me over into something that yes. uh, exactly. exactly oh mrs manning you said you know you were you were more reserved or, or quiet i still am I still <laughs> <laughs> you are you are so I, I i would i would use the word gentle spirit because that's yeah. that's what very i very graceful yes yes, yes. very, very well. what really led you to, into the field of, of coaching though and, and consulting and even founding the yeah. uh, leadership firm I think I think because maybe I'm a natural coach. Okay. I spend all my time listening and 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 that's what a coach does really, just listen. And without even giving advice, just listen while you, you go through your process. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I basically I really do that. I don't I'm not loud and mm -hmm. I, I am not the I'm not the I'm an S. And that ah. tells you what, what, what an S is. 
um, really very much team, very quiet, very reserved. Um, and, and that's who I am. And therefore appreciate who I am and, and live who I am. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's what I did, you're asking how I became involved. Yeah. Because that's who I am. And yeah. that's, the, that's the service that I provided yeah. to, my children, to my children and to my husband. I was the sounding board. And they would oh. come say things that they would not say to others. What do you think about so and so? Right. And, and, and get a hearing, you know. That's who I was. I still am. <laughs> so it's years old. I was. <laughs> yeah, finally got to say it. Listen, <laughs> listen, Mrs. Manning. Listen, Mrs. Manning. From day one, Mrs. Manning heard you were going to be here, and she's saying, and you're gonna see. You, you, listen, she's been saying, I cannot wait. I just want to say, Auntie, he's. Yeah, that's, that's between you two. You know, when you meet, you you do you. <laughs> that's what the children called me when I was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask, I heard you say that, um, you said that when your husband was in um, carrying out the responsibilities over the nation, you were home with the children. How did you know or what was your time frame in terms of their age group or in terms of your own age to know, okay, now I'll do and accomplish my goals, accomplish my dreams, because I believe that being a mother, that that's your first responsibility after being a wife, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so taking care of your children, nurturing them is your responsibility. But how do you put that timer on to know, okay, I'm going to shift my focus now or share, share the, the, the plates with the, the scales with something else, with my career or with my hobbies or how do you know when to make that switch? I, I looked after the children, but I also worked. Yeah? Yes. I was a public servant working in the ministry so that I worked and I looked after the children. Right. I was not involved in the politics. As for making the switch, when the children went off to university, my husband made the switch for me. He oh. came, home one, came home one one day and he said to me, "You know, I am going to make you the minister of education." And I said, "Who are you? You must be you must be flipping crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be crazy." He said, you, "You." I said, "I can't do that." He says, "You could do it." And I said, "No way." He said, "But I've watched you in operation, and you are really very good." Wow. I said, no way. And I said no way up to the day until I saw I was sworn in. <laughs> no way. I can imagine you driving in and it's like, you sure? No. no way. Way. You sure? <laughs> so, so the shift was made for me. I didn't make the shift. Okay, okay. The minute, the minute I got there and started to work, um, I I worked. No, when yes. I have to work, whatever I do, I do really, right. really well. I put my all in it. Mm -hmm. And then my children were not there, they were abroad. So I had no children to look after. Right. right. That was it. So your focus so, could have now gone towards, I presume, towards being a minister. I presume education became my child at that point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how important would you say it was or is uh, to have such a support or even someone who believes in you even more than you believe in the, your own capabilities. Yeah. I think he believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. And I presume, you know, there's a saying that when you're in the frame, you don't see the picture. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So I really don't, you don't really see who you are, what you are, why you are. Mm -hmm. And someone from the outside looking on would be able to say, I, I know you could do it. In this it in you. Yeah. But when you didn't have to do all of those other things and you had time with you and yourself alone what how do you spend your time you mean like now that that yeah I'm, yeah i tell you what a great day see like today that it rained all day <laughs> <laughs> a rainy day lying in bed with a book i read mm. i'm a really a tremendous reader and i maybe a book a week right so wow. I, read, I really read a lot and um and that's what i do i do I am an avid reader. Listen, we had so much, uh, such a good time, I should say, rather. Yeah, this was amazing. Yeah. His morning. yeah. And uh, listen, we could not stop that interview short. And uh, that's why we're going to definitely have a continuation, a part two for you. Yes. And some more with us. So the date, Sunday the 9th. Yes. Okay. Same time, 6 p.m. 
Same place, same ladies, same faces. We'll be here. <laughs> it's the continuation, ladies. Thanks so much, Thank friends. Thank you so much for uh, viewing our very first episode. Yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> to the repeat caribbean cyber stream be sure to subscribe be sure to like follow our instagram pages all the information is is right there it's right below. Yes. right there so be sure to follow subscribe and like thank you so much melka joe rachel curry clark melina de silva saying bye for now bye <laughs>